All right, so we're going to dive on in. Everybody's saying hello. Uh, if you are joining us, let us know where you are joining from. Thank you so much for joining us today. We greatly appreciate it. Uh, as always, I am here with my good friend, Craig Grant. Um, Craig, I mentioned it right when we joined, but thank you, as always, for joining us. We mm -hmm. greatly appreciate it. Um, it has been a really, really fun series so far this year, uh, bringing this group to these workshops, and I appreciate you doing it, so thank you so much. <coughs> All right, back at you. Same. Awesome. Thanks, buddy. All right, so we're going to dive on in. Let's do it. Um, and let's take you on over here. And we kind of left this one a mystery. And everybody, you know, is Have on, on purpose, it. right? One Google <laughs> tool you're not using. Um, and we're going to get to what that Google tool is in just a second. But guess what? Before the mystery, uh, <laughs> I'm going to go hey, a step Jared. further. We got to at least mention uh, who is bringing this to you guys today before we just drop the bomb and let you know what we're going into. Um, so first of all is the Real Estate Technology Institute. That is Craig's organization. I am also an instructor there, but founded by Craig. Uh, if you want to learn anything about technology, marketing, um, improving your real estate business in those manners, Real Estate Technology Institute is an absolute the place to be. So definitely check out reti.us, uh, reti.us. So that's a huge one. Um, great, great group. And also there are a number of associations throughout the country that are rolling out RETI memberships as member benefits. So that's something else you can check on uh, if you are a member benefit of your area. Um, you know, you might even have a free account over there. So definitely check We're that actually out. We're launching our first Canadian partner in Ooh. a couple of weeks. So. Ooh. Can you announce that Ooh. yet? Is that public yet? Is that public? Yep. It is? It is? All right. All right. It will be. It will oh, be. Oh, it will be. Oh, oh, it 14, went back on it. We got one launching. It went back on it. All right. All right. All right. We'll, we'll let everybody know when that does launch. Um, all right. So the other one is uh, my organization, Service for Life. If you are interested in building a 100% referral business, um, that is all of your business coming from past clients, friends, family, your sphere, uh, definitely check out Service for Life. It has done it for agents for years and continues to do an incredibly successful job of building that continued business over time. So check out those two groups, reti.us and serviceforlife.com. So all right, folks, are you ready? Are you ready to tell what we're actually getting into today? Because you're probably not using this to save time um, in the way you should. And before we do that, are there any guesses? What are our guesses from chat? What are we covering today? What is it? And we had several, like we put it out there for fun to see what you guys said. And the one we're going to do, it was right there neck and neck with one other. So yep, it is. Trust, when we do our, and we're going to talk about the master class a little late at, towards the end. When we do the master class, we're going to cover a lot of different Google tools in our masterclass in a few weeks, but um, a lot of people were throwing out, you know, keep and, yeah. You know, in fact, the one we're tools. covering, nobody mentioned in comments from what I saw, Craig. I did. Oh, there's one. Okay. No. Yeah. Well, you already got Heather. You already got your prize. Okay. You got it. <laughs> you've you've had it. You don't get another prize. You got it. Okay. That's it. Uh, Heather says Jamboard, Folio, Jay Phillips says local service ads. Those are all great options and those are all great uh, Google tools. So those are great ones. Any others? Any other guesses before we go? All right, drum roll. Here we go. All right, what we are covering today is Google Forms. Google Forms. Now, Google Forms, you might, before you... If you're even thinking about leaving, I wouldn't. But um, before you <laughs> take an immediate step and say, oh, I know about forms. I've done X, Y, and Z you with forms before. Probably don't. You probably don't. Um, you probably, you really probably haven't done a lot of what we're going to be talking about, of what you can do with Google Forms today. Uh, and Craig and I have used Google Works. Well, God, it's like referencing a wrapper or like Meta World Peace. It's like Google Workspace formerly Google Suite, formerly Google for Work, formerly Google Suite, again. Uh, so it's, uh, yeah, so Craig and I have used Google for years and years and years, taught courses on Google for years and years and years, and something that we both use a ton is Google Forms. Now, this was neck and neck with Google Keep. It was neck and neck with a few others, uh, Jamboard being one of them, and we are going to actually cover... <laughs> 
um, some of those topics, but we'll get to we'll get to more of that uh, later because we're not going to cover them today. Uh, but there are ways that we're going to be covering them up in the future. So, Frank, do you want to talk to them a little bit about what they can do with Google Forms? Yeah. So first of all, Google Forms is extremely easy to use. Like um, if you're in the from the Microsoft world, Microsoft has had Access around for decades. But Access is a pretty geeky program. You got to know code and script to really accomplish anything. With Google Forms, you don't have to learn any code. It's just kind of fill in the blanks. And you can create your own questionnaires, polls, surveys, even landing pages or signing pages to your website and a lot more. So as Alex mentioned, we both use it a lot in our businesses. Like, for example, anytime I teach any course, I tell all my students, you can go download all my slides by going to this page and filling out a form. Yep. That's a Google form. Yep. And that's how I collect all my students' information. And we're going to teach you how to do these things, but all of my students are automatically imported directly into MailChimp I use for marketing and follow-up. I mean, it's just, so I mean, there's so many of, things that work. Yeah, and instead of let's getting into all of the things that Google can possibly do or even things we use them for in our business, um, I think I want to at least mention some of the time-saving uses specifically for real estate. Um, because if you're not already using them in this format, in this layout, um, with what you're already doing, these are some great, great options where we've seen agents save an, a, an immense amount of time. And if there are other ideas, I know you said, Heather has said, I love forms. There's some other folks there in chat. Um, if you use forms in another way that we don't mention it today, I would love to hear from that in comments so we can share the knowledge and share the info. But some of those are things like buyer or seller intake forms. So when, you know, it's one thing to go through and, and have a, a buyer or a seller, let's say a buyer, have them set up, um, you know, automated searches with all their criteria. That's one side of it. But that doesn't always get into the real depth of all the information you need from them, all the questions that you might have for them, things like that when you're, when you're actually taking them in and figuring out all the information that you need and want about that buyer. The other side of that is with a seller, um, is doing intake forms with any seller, figuring out things like uh, when are good times to show that house or not show that house, right? And we'll go through a whole bunch of different options that you can use forms for um, in terms of buyer and seller intake forms and some of your options for doing that. Uh, another one is after showing assessments. So once someone has seen a house, um, once they've taken a look and gone, okay, well, that was good. This wasn't, I like this. I didn't like that. Google Forms gives you a really, really easy way to have them fill out that information and then break it down. Um, so you can, at the end of the process, go, okay, well, we looked at 10 houses, right? Some of the, some of your markets might be a little too crazy for prospectus a week or two later. Um, but either way, you can sit down and say, well, you didn't like this thing here. You like this thing here and get a much better understanding uh, of your clients by figuring out what they're going to do yeah. um, and their info. After yeah, and by the way, the other side of doing a after showing assessment isn't just with your buyer. It's also like if you're the, the listing agent, you can send that. Let's say you use it as a sign in form for people that are coming to your open houses or showings. You then can send out a feedback survey to everyone that came to that property saying, tell us what you thought about the property. Yep. Are there any improvements we need to make? Stuff like that. Absolutely. Another great one is scheduling appointments. Um, and Craig and I use this one ourselves uh, very, very heavily. Uh, but this is where, you know, you might have four or five different people who all need to schedule time together. A Google form makes it very, very easy to do that. And we'll show you how to do that today. In fact, we're going to show you how to do a lot of the stuff we're talking about right now and set that stuff up for yourself. Um, the next one is open house sign-ins. Uh, so instead of necessarily having to use an app or use some other tool to do it, it's actually really easy to set up uh, a Google form mm -hmm. to do this. Um, so that's, I've seen agents use this really, really successfully. Uh, and we're going to cover later how you can automate a lot of this as well to make it even easier. Um, beyond that, lead capture forms, or if you're doing giveaways and you want to take in some lead captures, you're doing giveaways, you can use Google Forms uh, for free for all of this, to do all of those things in your business. So it's an incredibly, incredibly powerful tool. Um, and the nice part is, is you, it's not just about using this. It's also a lot to do with the reporting and the information that you get back, excuse me, afterwards. Um, Craig, do you want to dive into that part? 
Sure. Um, you were talking about the giveaways or which part? I'm sorry. No, I what I was talking about is getting into data, like getting into the analytics and actually how all this is tracked once oh, you... Oh, yeah, sure. Absolutely. I didn't realize we moved to that slide. Sorry, my bad. Uh, so the cool part about Google Forms, again, it's very easy for you to create one of these questionnaires or sign-in pages, um, and then it generates a web page out of it. So you can just share that web page to somebody either with a link or sending them an email with it or even embedding it into a web page on your website. And then anyone who fills out that form, it always kind of gathers all that data and puts it into Google Forms where you can kind of break things down question by question and see who filled things out. And it also at the same exact moment is generating a Google Sheet, a spreadsheet of all those responses as well. So you have the data both in forms where you can kind of look at it from a you know, statistical standpoint, plus you can go to Google uh, Sheets and see every little entry broken down in a in a, in a spreadsheet format. So yep. it's that's another big reason why we love it is again usually you got to export out information and get it into a spreadsheet program. But Google was smart enough to make it where it creates that spreadsheet as you go. Absolutely. And the nice part here is, and I, it's funny because you start getting into this section about you know how it's going to look and all the data and the sheets and this and that. And it sounds complicated at some level, but it's really really not. And one of the yeah. nicest parts of how easy it is are the templates. And this is one of the nicest features. And I know, Craig, this is something that you use a lot. So I'll let you dive into this a little bit more. Um, but we both use yep. these a ton where uh, Google essentially gives you these layouts and these templates for a whole bunch of things that are some of the most common um, things that you can do with Google Forms. So we'll cover right. some of that today and, and how you can lay all of that out before we get into some of the more advanced stuff. Yeah, and, and by the way, you can always build a Google Sheet from scratch. I'm sorry, Google Forms from scratch by creating every question yourself. But the templates are already in there and already kind of populated. So if let's just say you're trying to, let's say I'm your broker and I'm trying to figure out how we're going to schedule floor time. Well, I can make a schedule and let everyone in the company go in and choose their available times or when they're not available. Um, and these are already built. So all you got to do is pick the one that kind of matches what you're trying to create. And then you could always go in once you choose a template and edit any any individual question or add new ones in if you want to add additional. But the templates really do make it quick and easy uh, where you don't have to do it from scratch. Uh, and there's like, what, three different slides of these templates. Yeah, we templates. Try to there's kind of so them. many yeah. that they have available. It's kind of wild. I mean, you can see here, and we'll just go through this quick, but time off requests, work requests, uh, finding a time like we talked about and scheduling time with people. Um, assessments, worksheets, quizzes, blank quizzes, contact info, customer feedback, order forms, or if you're doing giveaways, you know, t-shirt sign up, things like that for, um, for giveaways. And keep going. <laughs> event invite, event registrations, course evaluation, uh, event feedback. Like if you're hosting client events, getting feedback about them is absolutely great. Or even having people sign in when they get there to your client events is another great, great opportunity. Um, so mm -hmm. just something to kind of think about in terms of like a lot of this is done for you, I think is the best way yep. to think about this is really you go in change a couple colors and you've got a form that's, uh, that's ready to go and, you know, ready to save you some time. Um, now we've covered some of the basics here of sort of how to create a form. Do you want me to take them over and actually just show them in forms? Or do you want to, what do you want to go and do next, Craig? Because we're getting into more of the advanced stuff. Um. Well, yeah, I mean, the only other thing we were going to, and we could show this live, is we were going to tell them about um, kind of like the uh, the reg uh, queries that you can also do, stuff like that. But we could always show that to them live. Yeah, and I think I might yeah, do I mean, that live. So what, what I'm going to do now is dive into a little bit more of I will say some of the advanced stuff that you can do with Google Forms because a lot of this is set up as templates for you. It's very easy to use and easy to work with, but there's a few cool little tricks that I want to teach everybody that takes Forms sort of to the next level and makes it a lot easier. In fact, one of them was even this morning. I was like, did you know this, how you do this, Craig? And Craig was like, oh no, crap, that saves me time. Like that saves me time on this other form. And I'm like, ah, there it is. <laughs> um, so it just, it's a cool, fun little thing. So let me take you over here. Um, and we have just a blank 
untitled form right here. Um, the way you do this is if you go into Google Drive, create a new, like you'd be creating a new document and you just create a new form. One of the options there is form instead of uh, Google Docs or Google Sheet or anything like that. So you end up with a form that looks very much like this, okay? You have your title, your description, and then we start out with our first question. Now these questions are set up where you have a full dropdown of a whole bunch of different types of questions here. And there are some really, really cool ones that uh, I, that you can definitely use and, and a lot of people don't think about. One that I don't think a lot of people think about are file uploads. So like, let's say you needed to get pictures from somebody or you needed to get a whole group of people to send you a certain thing or whatever. It, you can set a file upload option um, and make that very easy to do. But the one I want to show you that's a little trick is if you pick short answer here, you also have an option for what's called response validation, okay? And you're, you're going to see that this is, first it starts out with like number greater than or less than or equal to or whatever, right? So if you needed a number between 0 and 100 that they entered, okay, you could put in, say, number greater than, less than, between, so on, right? But there's another option here. So length of text, number of characters that you want people to input. But there's one at the bottom that's called regular expression, okay? And this actually allows you to, usually you want to say matches instead of contains, but either will work. And what this is, is this allows you to put in a very, very basic set of uh, code that you can find out there that other people have written to validate that information. So let's say you are gathering phone numbers from people, okay? You can actually say regular expression phone number. And there are some cool websites out there that give you an ability. Stack Overflow is one of them for us developers out there in the world. Uh, another great one is what's called regex library um, an option. And what you're going to see is a little piece of code that they give you. And this you'll see a little check mark and this piece of code. Okay. Now this might be over the head of some folks out there, uh, but I just want to show you what the options are because you can pretty easily get somebody uh, who does any sort of coding or, or even a lot of kids these days in middle school are going through uh, when they're learning technology or actually learning some of these this type of stuff. Um, so just sort of keep that in mind. Basically, you can copy a little piece of code. You put it in right in here in the pattern and it matches that pattern. So just something to keep in mind and one little extra feature that I wanted to make sure so if you want to validate an email, that it is a valid email address, or if it's a valid phone number that they're inputting. And I don't mean valid in terms of... What this means is if somebody types it in with or without the dashes, or they use the parentheses or whatever, it'll it'll make sure it's a legit phone number. Right. Right, because the phone numbers can be added in so many different ways, depending on how a user wants to do it. Yep, exactly. So it cleans up a lot of your data as it's getting input, and it makes sure that you get better data as you go. People that are signing into your open houses or people that are doing things like that. It's a little trick um, that you can use to get better data out of Google Forms. Now, I just want to show that one in terms of something that's inside of Google Forms, but there's a whole bunch that you can do to, uh, we'll say, add on or add on top of Google Forms. I know this is something that um, that you do a lot, Craig. I don't know if that kind of want to take folks through add-ons. So yeah, so what add-ons basically are, um, think of it almost like as an app you put on your phone. So Google's entire system, whether you're in Docs, Sheets, Keynote, Gmail, Google Calendars, all support uh, adding into your account what are called add-ons, which are really third-party tools to make them even better. So is Google Forms good to begin with? Absolutely. But if you go out to what's called the, the marketplace, you can kind of shop for additional add-ons to make them even better. And a lot of these add-ons kind of solve maybe some limitations you've run into in Google Forms. So for example, um, and this is just showing you the overall marketplace, you can go shopping for all of them. If you want to advance to the next one. Um, first of all, 
all of Google's tools are uh, integrating now with Zapier and IFTT, uh, which means you can find really cool little quick uh, automations to do just about everything. So I know, Alex, you do this pretty heavily. This isn't really an add-on. We probably should have showed this before the add-ons. Yep. Uh, but like, you can make it where anybody fills out your form, immediately other things happen. Yep. So as an example, um, one thing we do with Zapier, and I do it with Zaps mostly, um, but you can do it with both, is you set up an automation to where, let's say, someone responds to an open house sign-in form, you can have them automatically entered into, say, your CRM or MailChimp and have them immediately get an email from you saying, hey, thank you so much. Now, there are other options Craig's going to cover in add-ons for email notifications and things like that. Um, but Zap al Zapier allows you to very quickly automate a lot of that. In fact, we have a, I have a project I can't quite talk about yet, but it's going to be using Google Forms. It's a lot of fun. Um, but basically what we do is we create a, an account for anybody who fills out um, a, a form. Okay. There's all sorts of automations that you can do with this data uh, once it starts getting input. And it's a really, really great way to do it and save you a ton of time. So your client intake forms can get saved uh, and synced to your CRM or to other things. If you have in an intake form, for example, let's say you gather their birthday when you do a client intake form. You can have that birthday automatically entered into, say, a MailChimp, which then has a campaign to automatically send them something on their birthday as, as you know, wishing them a happy birthday. Mm -hmm. There's a whole bunch of automations that when you're collecting data um, that you can then take action on that data specifically. Now, yeah. that also plays in with some of the add-ons because these add-ons uh, really take it a, a step further. Um, and Craig, I'll let you go into that more because I know that, that these are some of the ones that you use in depth. Exactly. So um, like this one I use called email notifications for Google Forms. And what it allows you to do very easily is you can make it where anytime somebody fills out your form, you can trigger customized emails and messages. Uh, and you can even create more than one trigger. So you could say do one on day one and do another one three days out. Uh, but you can just very quickly and easily go in and create a rule and say what emails you want to go out. Uh, and then, boom, it's all that you need to do. Yep. And you can also, if you want to, turn on where you get notified of anyone filling out your form as well. Yep. So if you want either uh, daily reporting or every time somebody fills one out, that's included in email notifications for Google Forms as well. I will add one uh, small note of warning. It's not a, a big deal. Uh, but just something to sort of keep in mind with this. A lot of these notifications or add-ons are actually using your Google account behind the scenes to send whatever <laughs> notification. Because that is your personal email address, that means there are often limits on how many emails you can send in a given day. Like, for example, Google... Right usually has a 500 email limit that they're like, hey, you're not going to write, personally write more than 500 emails in a day. You might mass email thousands of people, but you're not going to personally write. And, and Google and Gmail is meant for um, personal email that way. So if you are worried about more than, say, 500 people filling it out in a day or a lot of people back to back like that, uh, just sort of keep that in mind in terms of your notifications. But yeah. if you only have... 20 or 30 people filling it out, you know, no big deal um, per day. No big deal. So it's right. something to And in a typical real estate situation, you're never going to go beyond 500 yep. or something like this. Somebody filling out a form. Yep. Now, who knows right now the way the market is? Who well, you could have an open house of 500 people lately. Uh, but that is 100% accurate what Alex is saying. Yep. All right. Going the, on to the next one. The next one is huge. Um, which is called Google Forms Dynamic Fields. And what this one allows you to do is you can make certain questions in your form what's called conditional, which means if they answer the question one way, skip down to question number four or send them somewhere else that they answer a question or send a different email if they answered a question one way versus another. So it allows you to make specific questions in your form, kind of like where other things can happen yep. if they fill out that question a certain way. 
Now, the first two uh, we mentioned there are free, right? Notifications and well, the... they're they're uh, freemiums, so they right. have uh, free options, and then of course they have a pro paid option if you want to upgrade. Yep, exactly, and that's similar to the last one here, um, which is a, a add-on called Form Facade. Um, this is something I've played with a little bit, and uh, it's a pretty cool tool. It allows you to customize Google Forms. I mean, I mean, really customize Google Forms, which that is one sort of downside to Forms in general is how much customization of the look that they let you do. So Form Facade lets you do that. The other really nice feature is that Form Facade will redirect people to another web page uh, when they've completed the form. That's something Google Forms doesn't currently do. So just something to, to sort of keep in mind in terms of that. Now, yep. those are all add-ons. Well, do you want to do a quick, just sort of last field trip of show them a couple other little things? Sure. All right, sweet. So we'll take you over here. Um, now, I know, Craig, this is something you've used with your uh, gen your CRM generator, your vendor form. Mm -hmm. um, were there any particular questions or things that like, you really liked or used consistently? Well, I can, um, put it that way, when it, the CRM generator isn't that complex, it's just filling information about, you know, your product and what it has and doesn't. Uh, but for example, with RETI, when we bring on a new association partner, our associate, like it used to be a pretty kind of a messy process where I was sending them like paper documents to fill out and they would tell us everything about their association. And now I just converted that all to Google Form. Yeah. And now the associations can even provide us their rosters. They can upload the file of their roster so we have it. And they tell us what kind of marketing they want to build for them and everything. It's just made that process so much better. But the ability to upload a file, you mentioned it earlier, is pretty awesome to exchange information in that intake form. Absolutely. I love that one as well. And then uh, last but not least here, I think what I'll, I'll just kind of show everybody quickly. So we've talked a little bit about creating a form. Um, and adding questions to it. There's two other things, that, big, big, big things that I want to show everybody. First of which is sections. So yep. not just That's good call. adding question after question after question, but you have the ability to add another section. That way, uh, questions are then grouped together. So you have two, three questions together um, and then submit, they go to the next page and they get the next set of questions. So sections like that are hugely, hugely helpful. You know, sections are awesome. And also making a, a question conditional to go to a section. Yes. Like that's like when we, uh, with the CRM generator, if like a vendor answered a certain question one way, they would jump down to the next section. They wouldn't have to fill out a piece if they didn't have a certain feature. Yep, exactly. Um, and then, so we, we saw that you can always preview it here and get a quick preview of your survey and what it looks like. You can customize the theme, color, layout, look, some of that here. It's just very, very basic. Um, your settings are all here. So collect email addresses is kind of tricky um, because this one puts it right up front center and you don't necessarily want that all the time. Um, so sometimes you want to add an email form separately. Uh, presentation. I, I typically yep. turn that off and put just email as a field because yes. it's not usually the first thing you want in a form. Exactly. Um, and then your confirmation message is here. I always like to show a progress bar. People, uh, you tend to get more submissions when people know how far they've made it through a survey, especially if it's multiple sections. Um, you can turn these into quizzes and have some fun with them and actually have right answers and wrong answers, which is kind of a cool thing. Um, if you ever want to have fun with that with some of your clients. And then once you're all done, once you're ready to go here, uh, the fun part is you click send. You can either email this out um, and include it right in the email and they can fill it out there. Uh, get the link to it, fill it out there. You can send them a link to get to the, essentially the same thing that you see in the preview or you can embed it directly into your website. So there are a ton of options for how you can collect this information um, once, you, uh, once you have set up your survey. All right, that you know pretty much covers a lot of forms. Um, Greg, is there anything else? And let me ask, are there questions from anybody about yeah, let's forms? Ask I mean, to what me, we, it's, yeah. it really is a simple tool. You just got to get in there and play with it. Um, 
you know, the creating the questions is so easy. You just choose what kind of question you want. Is it going to be a, a drop down? Is it going to be a check box or radio button? I mean, you just kind of get in there and play, but it really is an easy program. Uh, and hopefully Alex and I have shown you over the last half hour, you can use it in more ways than you're thinking, right? An example we didn't really give, we mentioned it, is a sign-in page. Like if you want to have it where somebody has to sign into one page of your website to be able to get to maybe a report that you've created, you could do that, right? They sign in, they go to the page, and there's the report. Um, so a lot of stuff like that, you can use it and bend to Google Forms in so many different ways. And it's, again, just a free tool, part of your Gmail or Google Workplace account. Yep, exactly. And that's one of the greatest parts. It is a free tool. I mean, if you go to any other, and let me just give you guys a, a reference point here. If you go to any other survey tool out there, you are looking at spending some serious money for really no difference in feature set because, I mean, even like SurveyMonkey. You go to SurveyMonkey, you're going to spend a minimum of $384 a year. I don't know why I know that number exactly, but I do. Um, or <laughs> you're going to, if you actually want to like remove their branding and do all that sort of stuff, all of a sudden you're in the $1,200, $2,700 for the year to survey monkey to do exactly what you can do for free with Google. Um, so I just, it blows it. It really, it blows me away. The amount of money that other programs charge for surveys and how easy it is and how free it is <laughs> to do it, uh, with a tool like Google. So Michelle says, Google is awesome. Yes, it is. Absolutely is. Even though Craig bought a Mac. What? Um, I said agree. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. Any questions? You know, while we're doing that, we'll, while we're waiting for questions, um, I just want to mention to everybody uh, once again that this was brought to you by, first of all, the Real Estate Technology Institute, uh, my good friend Craig's organization. I'm an instructor there as well. Great, great group. If you're looking to learn anything about technology um, or marketing in your business, that is a place to check out. R-E-T-I dot U-S. As well as there's uh, my organization, Service for Life, um, which is if you are interested at all in building a 100% referral business that is doing 100% of your business without having to chase leads, chase deals, um, worry about where that next deal is coming from, uh, Service for Life is a tool that has been proven to do that for agents for years. So definitely check out uh, serviceforlife.com. Um, all right, any other questions? You know what, and and Craig, do you want to do you want to break it to him because this isn't this isn't the end. This isn't all we're covering on Google, um, and we're pretty excited. We uh, we have something coming up. You you want to share it? Yeah, we got a bunch coming up. So on Monday, like we're a little bit off schedule this week. We usually do our workshops, master classes on Mondays. So on Monday coming up, uh, we've got a the next free workshop, which is. Three tricks to manage your unruly inbox. Yeah. Uh, most people never get to inbox zero. They get overwhelmed by their inbox. And we're going to teach you a couple little tricks how to really kind of master it and get to the bottom of it. Yeah. Uh, and then speaking of the word master, uh, we've also got on April 26th, uh, which is the following Monday, our Google Workspace Masterclass, where we're going to teach you everything about Google, how to really run your entire business on Google, uh, and that our master classes are paid events, uh, but what we're doing is until t uh, the normal price is thirty five dollars, okay. But if you sign up before Tuesday, this coming Tuesday, which would be the twentieth, um, it would only be twenty five dollars. So you save ten dollars if you sign up today or any time between now and Tuesday. Uh, but we're really going to go deep into how to really yeah. run your entire business in Google and get everything done. I mean, we're gonna. Go into Google Keep. We're going to teach about all the tools you may not know about. Yeah. More add-ons you can put into the uh, into Google Docs, the Office Suite, and how to really a lot of cool tools in Google Calendars and all that kind of stuff you could do to really run your business. Just to, uh, and then I was just going to say just to give them, yet. yeah I was just going to say just to give them an idea. Um, Craig and I have both run our entire businesses on Google Workspace, which is now Google Workspace, which is for, formerly Google Suite, which is formerly Google for Work, which is for all the, basically Google's business tool. <laughs> um, Craig and I have run our businesses using those tools. I ran the business before we sold it 
uh, the Lone Wolf on Google. I run our current business on the Google infrastructure. I've set up other companies um, to run their entire businesses on the Google infrastructure. I've taught these classes for years. Craig has taught these classes for years, and they're things that we use um, heavily, heavily in our own businesses. So this, the, the amount of value that's in this course, um, Craig and I know about a good number of topics. This is probably one of our most in-depth topics that both of us, uh, that both of us know about and have studied at this point. It's true. <laughs> it really is. So, um, yeah, so uh, I posted it there for uh, the link for the masterclass. If you want to check that out, um, as Craig mentioned, this week, um, this week, uh, we are, it is a $25 ticket. Next week, um, a week prior, it's going to go up to 35 So, um, And I put the link in for the Monday's workshop, the one on three tricks to manage your inbox. Perfect. I put that link to the chat as well. So if you guys are interested in signing up for that one, that's free against the work, the masterclass the week after is the paid event. Uh, and by the way, the other thing that we, I didn't mention, it was up on that slide is we did our Canva masterclass back in January and had amazing response to it. In fact, ever since then, we've been contacted by so many people that said, I wish you would do that one again, because I'm sorry I missed it. Uh, so we are going to be repeating our Canva masterclass in May. We haven't nailed down the date yet. We're still kind of figuring that out. Uh, or did we nail down the date? Uh, we were close, but we'll, we'll be announcing slide, it. I thought we did yeah, we'll, we'll be close. We'll be announcing it soon. Um, I actually want to hear from, okay. from folks in chat. Is Are folks interested in either uh, the Google um, Google class or are you interested in the Canva masterclass. Let us know in chat which one of those you are interested in, or both. Um, or both. And uh, definitely check those out and sign up. All right. I think we covered it. Any questions about Google Forms? Yeah. Any questions about anything else before we close down today? Craig, I'm proud of us. We kept this to 40 minutes today. Yeah, you and I, that's an accomplishment. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> I looked down and I was like, oh my God, we're, we did it. We, we're trying well, to keep we these workshops to, to a half starting hour. In about 20 I know, minutes. right? <laughs> I, know, I love it. All right, no, uh, no other questions. It looks like we um, will be closing it up here in a second. I'll just leave this going live here for one more minute while we, uh, if there are any other questions. Right. Both and classes. Both I class. love it. Oh, I love it. That's great. And about Paso, Texas. She didn't introduce herself earlier. Oh, no way. Well, thank you for joining us, Amanda. I, I appreciate you being here. Yeah, definitely. All, All right. Well, for just I'm not seeing any new here. questions or anything coming in. Yep, so. me neither. I think we're good. All right. Well, we're going to close it down. Uh, thank you to everyone once again for joining us today. Um, Jay Feist says, great stuff. Thanks, guys. We use Google Forms for our offer website. Great, great. That's there a great use. That is a great use right there. I love it. Yep. Always taking it to the next level, Phil. Always, yeah, always taking it to the next level. It. I love it. Thank you. Awesome. Well, thank you so much to everybody today. Um, we greatly appreciate the time. Uh, I see Raul is in here. I didn't see him mess message either in chat. He snuck in, I think. Yeah, uh, right. <laughs> I love it. Well, again, thank you to everybody for joining us. Um, we greatly appreciate you taking the time out of your day to come and join us. We hope we have been helpful uh, and taught you something that you can take back and use in your business.